Attention, humans! You will listen to this podcast, fail to comply, and you will be exterminated! Secure your TARDIS and prepare to join Super Geeks! Hello, and welcome to Super Geeks Reaction Who number six. My name is George, I'm your host, and with me is my co-host and friend, Son. How are you doing today, Son? Hey, everyone. It's Thanksgiving while we're recording. Yeah. Are you sleepy? Actually, it's, it, it, on my time, it's one minute until it's not Thanksgiving, because I'm right. on Eastern time. Mm-hmm. So what you're saying is you've got one minute to midnight? One minute till midnight. That's right. And today we are going to be talking about the latest. Well, tonight a new episode aired, but I actually haven't seen it yet, which is weird. But uh, wait, I'm what? Go- T- tonight a new episode aired? Oh yeah, I keep forgetting it's Thursday. See, that's yeah, it's weird- it's Thursday, but yeah, a, a a new episode aired only on Amazon. I don't know why. I keep thinking it's Sunday. It's just thing that's gotten into my head. You're right, though. Because I, we have the normal show, we record the normal show on Sundays. Ah, uh, that could be why. No, I, I think it's because of what you were just saying. It's that link, uh, I, I linked something where Amazon actually accidentally, f- I, I checked, uh, also they fixed it, unfortunately, before I could watch it. Darn it. But they um, they did make a boo-boo, and they uh, they uploaded the, uh, the next episode, The Witch Finders, before... They were supposed to air the one we're about to talk about, which is Kerblam. Oopsie. Uh, oopsie. Yeah, exactly. I was like, damn, I better hurry up. If they reported it, the odds are it's already... You know what? You know what that means? What? That obviously means Amazon is better than Kerblam, right? (laughs) Oh, that fits so well into the narrative of what we're about to talk about. Well done. Well done. So, yeah, Kerblam, episode um, seven. Yeah, at six or seven uh, of Doctor Who. Shoot, is it seven? No, it's six. It's, it's, it's six. It's seven. You don't count the premiere as an episode? No, I am. I, I'm going by the... Is it seven? I think you're right. We just I think had you're right. an episode. We just had a reaction episode for two episodes. No, you're right. It's seven. It's seven. Uh, I was just checking. Um, it's number seven, I think. Again, I'm not sure, because there's only ten... And then the uh, New Year's thing. Well, anyways, Doctor Who... I'll, of course, when we upload this episode, it will be corrected. But I think it's either episode 6 or 7 of Doctor Who, series 11 with Jodie Whittaker. But um, the episode is called Kerblam. And they did a preview thing for Children in Need, which uh, we talked about a little bit in the last... uh, Reaction it's who? weird because watching this episode where where I watched it, shot for shot, the children in need thing was in the episode when I watched it proper. It was great. I mean, okay, off the cuff, before we get into the details, what did you think? I love this episode. I honestly saw this as much as as much as a lot of people on the 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 um the the anti SJW side of this culture war thing that's going on right now go oh god doctor who is all kinds of of SJWE and it's not good anymore and look the ratings are falling and la 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 I I watched this episode and I went wow this is a very conservative republican-esque argument going on that the villain is that the villain is actually making but at the same time the villain's sort of terrorism in this episode actually makes changes to the company that are for the betterment of the people who are both working there and the people who are on the planet 
on uh 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 that the moon of the Kablam industry is 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 around, you know, orbiting around. It's like uh yeah, this is this is a very Republican talking point leaning episode. How how is any of, how, how is any of this episode not SJW or uh? It's how actually is not this actually, SJW. I have not seen anyone argue that it's an SJW thing. To be honest with you, except for you right now. Um, the reason why is because. It's actually, there are two parts to why people are liking this episode. Uh, well, three parts, I should say. One, because it's a very um, callback. There's an episode of Doctor Who from the Tom Baker era that a lot of people are noticing this similar to, which is called The Sunmakers, which had a lot of similarities to the whole corporate machine thing in the warehouse. Yeah. And, you know. But at the same time, they also were making comparisons to Amazon and how they recently were outed for treating their their workers a certain way and then on top of that you had the whole idea of the machine replacing the people and the idea that the system is not the problem it's the people that abuse the system and make these decisions that is the problem so i thought there was a lot of like well, i mean it's not well it see and it's see, it, it's not even that see the the Jody makes a great point in that that it's the that it's the system that is abused by people but you have to remember, only 10% of people on that planet have a job. And that 10% that 10% of people, was dictated, though, by who? The system. Th th that 10% of people, that, that, that only 10% of people was how, however many hundreds of thousands of people they had working at the factory. That you know, and that is an in, that is indicative of a system that is a system of government that is broken because only ten percent of people are working in a place that is eighty to ninety percent automated. Let's break this episode down a little bit, though. In the beginning, we had an awesome moment where we had a call back to Matt Smith when she got a kablam, mm -hmm. and she said the kablam man, and I thought her her performance during that. The excitement part was actually very cool. They, uh, say what you will about Doctor Who, but they are good at making um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're good at making um, oh, what's that catchphrases? They're good at like you know, don't blink, you know, uh, kablam, yeah. you know, things like that. They're good at that. I mean, and they did a good job here. You know, Jodie's character is like the her version of the Doctor, I should say. I keep saying Jodie, you do too, but it's whatever. Everybody knows who we're talking about. She, her excitement, like, it's the Kablam Man. And, you know, it, it's like a thing in the galactic circles, yeah. you might say. And she, and she gets the fez. And she gets the, puts the fez. And I, I've seen so many reaction uh, videos of people. And they're like, the moment she puts on the fez, everybody's like, oh, my God. But see, but see here's the thing. Here, here's, here's the big question. Did Matt even ever order the Fez at all, or was that was that the system? It's a nebulous sending thing. Her, sending her, sending her the cry for help. It's a nebulous thing. Oh, that's a. I never thought about that because at the same time that the Fez was sent out, because remember she said card, she doesn't yes. remember ordering everything. She she didn't remember ordering anything. Nobody else has pointed that out until you said that. My God, I never thought about that. Because it would be one thing if it was just a Fez, but you're right. The Help Me card was in the same package. And, and, and remember, and remember, we're also dealing with, we're also dealing with uh, Matt Smith's Doctor, which is the last known Doctor to the galaxy before, quote-unquote, the Doctor died. But again, what you're pointing out, though, it would could be nebulous as far as like, right? I know when I, did I when did he when did when did he or she order it? I, no, but, I I no, but I understand. The, I the understand card, all of that. the card. But, that's the thing. That's remember, the, remember, it was the it was the doctor's death at large was during the Matt Smith era, and what was Matt Smith's thing? The feds. And well, the, well, right, the, right. the doctor, the doctor had to quote unquote kill himself so that he could do whatever it was that he had to do to find out what the silence was doing and all that stuff. Remember? 
Yes, I do remember. And the I also galaxy think... had to think he was dead. So yeah, the last known doctor to the galaxy and to the Kablam's the, the, the Kablam system would have been Matt Smith. So this cry for help would have been sent to the doctor under the assumption that it was still Matt Smith. Hence Let's talk the Fizz. Let's talk bubble wrap. Okay, so I don't know about you, but this episode made me afraid of bubble wrap. I see bubble wrap actually five, maybe ten feet away from me, from a previous package from UPS, and I'm afraid of it. Uh, well, you shouldn't be, because we don't live in an age where we can stuff uh, explosive gas and compress it into bubble wrap like that. No, 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 no. You didn't pay attention to the episode. I watched it 13 times. No, I'm just kidding. Like, I watched it like three times. And there were mini bombs, little nano bombs in each bubble. Yeah. Do we have the technology to do that, George? Yes. Technically, we do. We just don't explain. I'm just kidding. Well, I think we do. Well, we no, could do something we like it if we really no, wanted we, to. Yeah. Yeah. But the cost would be astronomical. That never stops people that want to blow people up. Like, the one guy. And by the way, that's my biggest complaint about the episode. The only complaint, really. Everybody else was awesome. The guest cast was amazing. Charlie. Now, Charlie was the guy that was the maintenance dude that was, in, that was responsible for everything that was going wrong in this episode. My only complaint was he was an activist, but he was more of a terrorist. And his cause was kind of stupid. What do you think about that? Uh, again, this is where I point out this was a very Republican-esque kind of episode to me because his whole point was the was his this is his whole point was you're literally still it, we had to fight for ten percent at some point in a couple of years or a decade or or, or so down the line it's going to become seven. And then five, and then one, and then nobody on this planet is going to be working, which means nobody is going to be making money, which means nobody can afford to do anything. Which, again, I understand because that's been like the ancient argument against automation is because it puts people out of work when it comes to mundane and repetitive tasks for the most part. But that's the turnabout because you had the people doing mundane, repetitive tasks. That's a fair argument. Um, I felt like this. And by the way, I'm not taking credit for this observation. It was Mr. Tardis from a podcast where he does Mr. Tardis reviews that pointed this out. When the doctor switched the anklets, uh, the colors, with, with Graham, at first I was like, okay, so she wants to go down to the, the packaging thing, but... Because she wants to, she wants to be able to process the slips. Yeah. Right, right, right. The right. However, in the law, when you look at the whole story, in the long run, the system was literally sending her where she needed to go. She was from trying the to get him, get her with uh, Charlie to get to the bottom of things, and that was why she got the purple or was it blue? I don't remember which. Uh, whatever made her go down to the janitorial level. Yeah, now, it was it, the blue. as far as the story narrative goes. It worked really well to give uh, Graham a reason to shine, as usual, because, by the way, he yeah. is the breakout companion in all these episodes. Um, he, but at the same time, people kept going, well, does that mean the system would have made the doctor a janitor? That doesn't make any sense. No, it does make it sense. It, 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 it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect the, sense. Because the, the system, the system, the system wanted knows help. that, yeah, the system knows that it's the janitor being the bad guy. Exactly, and a lot of people, except Mr. Tardis, noticed this. He was the first person I picked, I came across uh, that he's that said, "Think about it. If if the doctor had not gone, if the doctor had been in in the uh, janitorial, or, you know, the maintenance thing, she might have actually gotten to the bottom of things a little quicker, because." The system wanted to, the doctor to be with Charlie. So that's why, even though she was super intelligent and all that, it wasn't judging the doctor. It was like, I need help. I need, I need the, you to get right to the bottom of this and go right down there with Charlie. But she was like, oh, I want to do packaging. So she switched it. That delayed well, things. That, it, well, yeah, of course it delayed things. But at the same time, it wouldn't have opened up the... the uh, 
this is this is this is a this is a common writing trope in that it to to have to have the groundwork for the hero of whatever story the the uh, the, the the protagonist uh almost instantly and immediately getting to the bottom of the situation but because they think they need to start the investigation elsewhere it opens up the whole walking the storyline of of all of the all of the key points to the investigation before finally reaching the conclusion this well, is this of course you need, you need books yeah you need that drama you need that dramatic uh drag out so to speak of like Casting the net and fishing for the for the clues. I would I would actually love to see like kind of a subversion of that narrative, kind of like a kind of like a a, a, a Sherlock meets Moriarty at the very beginning of the book, but doesn't realize that Moriarty is the bad guy, and then you know it, it, not that they change anything, but that then Moriarty does the bad guy thing, and and Sherlock's then goes after him trying to build evidence that's 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 a subversion i would love to see you brought of, up a good that point common narrative. but you did bring up a good point because i do like the way they subverted our expectations the bad guy gun the head of the corporation i forget his name but i it was very like misleading like in, in a good way um we thought he was he was a red herring he was the bad guy he was the guy well, like, like, you know yeah, doing whatever but well, he wasn't. Be, he wasn't. Let's be, let's be honest. The doctor was very intimidating towards him, so that did make the doctor very sus suspicious. Well, she did. Too. She did do the pinky pinch, the pinchy poke. Well, no, 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 no. That's not what I mean. When she's down at packaging, and he like quote unquote harasses that 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 girl down there, like she just gets all in his face, and then she yeah. ends up by going. She ends up by going, do you know somebody who needs help? And that's very intimidating when he knows all this shit is happening. And that just goes to show how, what an incredible performance that Jody keeps giving in the in the season. Um, she's amazing. I mean, seriously, she is my doctor. Uh, no, no matter what anybody... No, I'm sorry. She is my doctor. I know it's only been like seven episodes, six episodes, whatever. But she... I, I love the fact that they did this, that they said, let's take a chance. They didn't just pick a female doctor. They did what Moffat said in one interview. He said, if we're going to do a female doctor, we're going we're gonna to pick the best person to do the job. It's not about just saying, hey, let's have a girl. Boom. It's, they picked a girl. They picked a woman who is right for the role. And every time she speaks, every time she does a scene, I'm not seeing her as a woman. I mean, I do, but that's a different story. But she, she, I'm seeing the doctor. I'm seeing the character of the doctor come across the screen. I'm seeing my my the words that are the dialogue that she delivers. That is the doctor. I, it's not about her being a male or a female. That is the doctor. And and, and in this episode, I think she even delivers it more strong than ever. I think I think that. Um, she gets stronger with each episode as we go. And what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I really think that, that, that this is, uh, this is one of those episodes where the doctor's character is, is strong enough as an idealist to carry the, the, the what is the word that I'm looking for? The, the, the kind of just, aloofness that is the doctor this kind of loopy stand out and alone kind of character and that also... the, uh, the idealism of of all the other doctors plus her has has created this thing where you know we talked previously about her not having a her not having some kind of standout speech or anything like this really commanding performance to say i am the doctor but Everything she's done. I mean, we we talk about uh, we t in certain circles we talk about you know uh, merits ver merit versus uh, merit versus right, and um, this is her proving she's the doctor by merit more than anything by having these performances 
that prove she is the doctor and she carries them so well and she commands them so well. No, yeah, we're going to have episodes where we're going to go, eh, but it's not necessarily that she's not performing the role well. It could be that it's just a badly written episode. I completely agree. I think that for me, um, when Jody, her, 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 okay, any doctor is going to need to have that kind of screen presence. They're going to need to make people engage with them. Like it isn't words that they say. It's the facial expressions. It's the look. It's the whole way that they're they they look at you through the screen and say, "I'm talking to you, audience. I'm not just talking to this character." And Jody does that. And I feel it. And I, I it's weird. I, I, I don't even know how to explain it properly, but it's like she is talking to her character and says, we're, we're, well, in that speech she gives to Charlie, the guy that's the maintenance guy that turns out to be the bad guy, um, she says something about the system. It's not the problem. It's the people that are abusing the system. That's the problem. And she does this these hand gestures. Now, we talked about this last week with Carlos about that one episode with the the Punjab episode where mm-hmm. she does she does the front the uh the little detail the little hand gestures yeah, to the yeah. She did sort of the same thing when she was talking to Charlie. Well, she's before. yeah, she's she's yeah, if you, well, yeah, you haven't you, you you haven't really picked on up on that, but she's very emotive. She, emotive. She yes. Speaks, she does the she hand speaks gestures. With her hands. I love that. Like when she's talking to Charlie and she's trying to say it's not you. You know, you're not an activist because you don't actually have a cause. I I love but, that but speech. He did, but he did have a cause. Uh, See, he had a he had a terrorist cause. Now that's where she was. No, leading. Oh no 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 no. At this point, at this point, okay, just uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh, no no no. That that to me was the weakest part of the entire episode. I don't agree with you. That it was, I'm gonna hold argue on, with you. Let me let me, yeah okay fine. Let me finish though. All right, go ahead. That was the weakest. That was the weakest part of that in, of the entire episode because yes, he did have a cause. What he did was terrorism, but yes, he had a cause. See, there's a there's there's this thing that goes on when you're when you're an idealist and an activist. There's this line. You can only have a cause to, though if someone else agrees. Well, hold on. Let me finish. Sorry, go ahead. There's this line that you don't cross, that you're not supposed to cross, that you shouldn't ever cross if you're an activist. And we have had that happen time and time again. And we usually get to that point when nobody's listening. See, when, uh, like, years ago, a couple of decades ago, we had an activist group called The Weather Underground, who was fighting for various causes... Wait, wait, wait. who? I never heard of this. Yeah, there was a there was a group that mailed pipe bombs like decades ago called the Weather Underground. All right. Yeah, they started mailing pipe bombs because they felt nobody was listening, and this was them being desperate to be heard, and that's what happens when a population is not able to, you know, here in the United States, that's what happens when the population feels it's not being listened to, even as it protests. They go, they're not listening, the only answer is violence. Well, this seems like he felt like he was the only one talking about it, and in his desperation, he decided, let's kill a bunch of people and prove the system is broken. Well, that's interesting. I never actually heard of that exact scenario that you're talking about, but I, I guess I. Uh, but still, Charlie was like the doctor made an example, and she said, she said, and she did it with her hands. Like we were talking about how she's, you know, using her hands. It's the way she like the empath the uh, not not the empathy the um, emotiveness passion, the passion. Oh, okay. With the way she expressed herself, with her hands, and her not I'm not saying hands. I'm not saying she I'm not saying what she did in that what she did in as as an actor was well, awesome. her delivery. Let me just say her delivery. Her as delivery. An actor. Her delivery was awesome. The problem was the writing for it was like just completely turned around. You know, eh, I'm gonna to, I'm to, gonna say in my opinion, 
she, it, it sort of made, this is what made the episode work. Because if they hadn't done this speech that she gave, I think it could have been a mediocre episode of Doctor Who. Well, but I well, think well, well, that's again, again, that's the thing. She didn't, she didn't say, she didn't say you've crossed the line between activism and terrorism. Well, she did say people she, like but, you are the problem. She did say that. That's actually right. a quote. But, but, but see that again, again, that's the non-compassion coming out because. The you know when 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 people are desperate, they will do things they don't want to do that they find morally reprehensible. Like he was doing, he knew what he was doing was wrong, but he was desperate for somebody to listen to him. And he not, felt not just that, he, but he was alone. But he was one he, of that ten percent. Yeah, exactly. He felt like he was the only one there that thought that this was a problem that could get worse. And by all rights, he's kind of right because only 10% of the population in any given industry is working. That still yep. leaves, even even if there are other industries on the planet itself, I, and I'm sorry, I cannot remember the name of the planet for the life of me. Uh, but if, yeah, I, it's... Even, even if there were other, like, I mean, even if there was a burger joint on the planet... Even if there's a, a a Walmart on the planet over there, ninety percent of that place could be automated, and only ten percent had to be the workforce. Do you know what that means? That means the only person who would need to work in a McDonald's if it was on that planet would be one person, and that would be the person behind the register, because everything well, else could be automated. That's true. Um, <coughs> the thing that about is not a, that is not a that is not something that is not something that promotes anything because it means a giant majority of humanity both can't work and has no source of income. Which is why you hear all of these people, like the 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 factory worker who uh, the uh, the the scan guy, Kandoka. Can Kandoka. That's the name of the world. Um, okay, it's uh, a moon, the, the, a moon of. Uh, the only reason I like I got quiet for a minute is I looked. I looked. It you up. were looking it up. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, it's I uh, uh, the main office of Kerblam is on the moon of Kandoka. Yeah. And so, so the, I think gonna, actually I I don't think they're gonna just make all this effort to uh, to. Uh, to posit this world and this 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 company and just let it go. I think we're going to see. Okay. Yeah. No. I completely. Well, but see, here's the thing. If you if you look back to all the stuff that was discussed in the episode, the the head of people, quote unquote, talking about most of the people there being grateful, just being grateful, they have a job. Okay, the 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 packing guy who works with Yaz. Talks By the way, about, both of them, both of them. I, I'm not gonna like go and dig up their their actors' names because people know. Uh -huh. uh, but great performance. You know, this is the one thing I like yeah. about this season of Doctor Who is the guest performers. They've all been like, you know, they've you actually all been care. Stellar. Yeah. They they've been like, you know, I, I swear to God, every single guest actor that's been in every single episode. Of this season, I remember them. In my uh, okay, head. okay. I'm trying to finish making a point, George. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like the guy who was in the packing thing with um with Yaz, the, the where they where they pick up. Oh yeah, the um, Dave. I think his name was. Yeah, yeah. He was talking about how he was glad to have a job because it allowed him to pay for his daughter's education. Right. So this is still this is still a heavy you know what this is still what would be considered a heavy ca heavily capitalistic society where things have to be paid bought and paid for in a transactionary in a tra in a, in a, in a or sort of transaction but you have what could be half of the people of Kendoku not even able to have a job because most of it's automated yeah, and they don't actually, they leave it nebulous. They don't say what century, what, you know, whatever it, it takes place, and they leave it nebulous. But I, I think that they had to, you know, it, it works that way. 
but again, this is this is what I'm saying. This is a this is a anti automation episode, which is something that has been a a a more conservative talking point for the I do not time. agree with you on that. I think that her speech actually sp- spoke volumes about that. It's not about it being anti uh, automation. It's about how being responsible for how you use this 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 uh, technology. Technology well, is well, not no, 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 by no, no, itself. No 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 no. Nobody is saying this is anti technology. This is not saying that. It's, I agree. It's, That's it's, my the, whole point. The, the talking point. The talking point that I'm making is not that it's about being anti technology. The talking but, point against automation is that you are sacrificing a human being's ability to create and generate an income because you are replacing their mundane task with a machine. That's the argument. Well, that's the argument, and that is actually a good point, which is what one of the things that this episode tackles. Uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting was the bubble wrap because the whole bubble wrap thing was fun as hell. Because, I mean, this reminded me of Stephen Moffat. He could take something like blinking the, the angels, the statues you see, and they make you scared. Like a, a simple mundane thing, you know. And then in this episode, it's like I, I kept seeing reactions to it. Like, you'll never look at bubble wrap the same again. And I have to say, it's true. I have bubble wrap. I, I thought that's what they were going to try to do, but Chibnall does not do it the way Moffat does. Ah, uh, he I, doesn't. But I, it did work. Though. I don't it have. I don't have the same feeling to bubble wrap because I know this technology is not something we currently possess. I ah. Uh, but see, still. the thing with the thing with the thing with Moffat is that he took something mundane and said, "Hey, you see that thing? That thing?" Yeah. Well, does. he kind of. I'm oh, gonna, no, no, no. Let me finish. He said that go ahead, thing. Go ahead. That, that thing, that thing could possibly be an alien, and it might come to kill you. What we have here is technology inside of technology that can kill you, and I can go, oh yeah, but see, that technology does not exist right now because it would be way too costly to make. Besides, most places are actually trying to phase out bubble wrap because it's actually already too expensive to make. It's uh, easier to make packet peanuts. Okay, I'm going to tell you a, a quick story. Before I even watched the episode, I said to my girlfriend, I said, I'm about to watch the Doctor Who episode, which is all about how evil bubble wrap can be. And she pulled out bubble wrap from a package she just got from UPS for her birthday from her dad. And she pulled out bubble wrap and she goes, well, if the episode is about popping bubble wrap, pop, pop, pop. Right in front of me. And this is before I even watched the episode. And I thought that was like, I I was thinking like, as I'm watching her do that, I'm like, Wow, this episode is not wrong because people do do that. It's not wrong. Do you and know I thought why? that was I thought do it was know, bro- do, do, do you know why? It doesn't because matter it, why. It's brilliant. No, 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 no. Do you know why people do that? Why? Because it, it, it satisfies a certain human compulsion. Um, you know how you, you watch those uh, animated uh gifs of of like ice cream coming out of a a yogurt machine or something, and you go, ooh, yeah, that's so satisfying to watch. It scratches some kind of subconscious itch. Bubble wrap is the physical application of the same because you were interacting with it. I don't care what the reason is. All I know is I saw her do it, and I hadn't even watched the episode. So so you had literally built up your own terror is what you said. I did. I did. It was scary, actually. Because it made me realize well, that's that they, on you, not anybody else. Well, well, hold on. But the thing is, they they hit on something. That's what I'm saying. Like they they knew that it wasn't just a random thing. When they picked bubble wrap and they did that, whoever the writers were, they were brilliant because they said, "Hmm, what's the common thing that we all do that we could make we could exploit?" And make it into a terror thing. And by God, they did. Because I watched it happen in front of my, in front of my own eyes. And I'm like, Holy Yeah, shit. but see, yeah, but see, the 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 the, the end was, was just stupid. I the, personally the, the, don't the, pop the, bubble wrap, but everybody else does. Graham Graham putting the bubble wrap back in a box and going, mm, I'm just gonna leave this here. It's well like, that's, that's because of what he experienced though. That's that's, I mean, that's stupid. I mean, Ryan literally popped 
pieces of that bubble wrap at the beginning of the episode. Why yeah. are you afraid of it now? Speaking of which, by the way, Ryan talks about how um, he, he – and this was a key thing in the episode – how he had all this experience with the warehouse. And I, I saw a lot of things online where people were like, when did he ever talk about working in the warehouse? This is something they just threw into this. No, actually, he talked about this in the Arachnids in the UK episode. He actually said, it beats – Working in that warehouse. I mean, I went back and watched the episode, and I caught him saying that. I don't know if he mentioned it earlier in that in the uh, Doctor Who this season, but it, it has been at least mentioned once before. So they didn't just throw it in there. Like, by the way, Ryan says he worked in a UPS type warehouse. There you go. It actually has been aforementioned. So I'm just throwing that out there. Two episodes ago, it happened. I, I you know. They went through um, they went through kind of a a gauntlet with Ryan this episode. Not not with him being in like the 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 packing room. Oh um, yeah, the uh, the conveyor belt not, thing. No, no. Before they even go down there, he's he's literally just. I I mean, he's almost at the point of hyperventilating, going, "I'm not good at hand coordination." But yeah, uh, he, just so you know, I mean, like he literally stops in between each sentence that he's forming. And, like, has to collect all of his thoughts. It's, I mean, it's almost like he's got, I mean, we, we, under, we as the viewers understand he has coordination problems. That doesn't explain why he's so good at shooting aliens, though. Uh, but, you know, he's that not. aside, that aside, he literally shot robots like he was playing Call of Fucking Duty. <laughs> he didn't. He actually, he... That episode was funny, actually. But, you know, I, I, I love him. Uh, I will say that... Um, the actress but, no, was he was... he was It was it seemed like, during that conversation, he was exposing that he had some kind of other disorder. He did. Because he was almost on the point of hyperventilating, trying to explain to this other guy, he doesn't have good hand-eye coordination, and that can be really screwy for him. Yeah. But, to, to 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 convey that in such a way makes me go, he has more than just a hand-eye coordination problem because it is taking everything within him to both say these words and to go down the tube. I actually like that part. I actually like that part from me personally. But I want to point out something else, though. It, it wasn't just the fact that he did that. Um, it was more like, you know, when he went down that conveyor belt he he's he he did sort of pre 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 warn everybody you know and yaz knew that actor the the actress though that plays yaz I, I forget her name uh but yaz had a great moment at the very end at the very end of the episode um uh, and carlos would ask me well he wouldn't ask me he would say we haven't had a lot of tardis time this season now here's the thing the TARDIS serves a purpose, and it, uh, so far, Chris Chibnall has been sort of acknowledging the classic Who, where you like the Tom Baker days, where you use you use the TARDIS minimally. You use it for like, I'm going to get here, I'm going to go there, and then boom, we walk or out the of the box. Conversation in between, yeah, yeah, and we walk out of the box, and there we are. So it's just, it's a device. We get to there, we get to here. Um, and so at the end of the episode, Yaz, the, the, I, I, I feel bad for not quoting her name, but I don't want to Google it. It's who plays Yaz did a great moment where she pulled out the, um, the locket that her, that, uh, whatever the guy's name was, Dave, his, his daughter gave him. That's one that said dad. Yeah. See, here's the weird thing. It's like. I half expect somebody to throw me a curveball and say when they deli when they finally get to deliver this locket, she's literally a headstone somewhere. But I thought the perf I'm just saying I think the acting performances between oh yeah no yeah no Jody and her were amazing, and she also she choked up. When I say yes, I mean the actress because obviously um, Gill is her last name. I don't remember the first name, but. She did an amazing job. I thought, like, she, like, 
he saved my life by doing this. And I, it's the and then doctor says, it's the least we can do. And I was like, oh, man, you know, I really got caught up in that moment. The, 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 the uh, team no, the, uh, th this 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 writing, th this writing staff is really good at heartstring tugging this season. Yes. Really good at it. At the same time, I, I have to look at the, 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 the context of, of, of all of that and go, man, somehow I expect it. And this, I'll, I'll be 100% uh, uh, I'll be 100% honest about this. I blame Moffat for this. I uh -huh. expect them to show up and that girl be dead. I really, really, really want Jody to meet Jack. I don't know why. I just feel like called a... Just curiosity. I just I want to see the way she reacts. Well, considering how considering <laughs> considering how John Barrowman's been posting pictures on Facebook all Thanksgiving of him in nothing but a t shirt and and red heels. He's been hosting yeah. most he's been posting more about him being on Arrow than he has Doctor Who. Well, I mean, yeah, because he's on Arrow and not Doctor Who, but well, still, no, I mean like No, he's not really it's kind of the same situation in both shows. He's like, he's nebulous. He's like, yeah. I, could show, I could show back up at any time if the writers and the producers want me. That's the thing. I mean, at, at this point, I'm just, any any John Barrowman that we get serious or, or hyperinflated or whatever, whatever acting we get from John Barrowman is always great acting. Always welcome. Because yep. John Barrowman is awesome. Yes. Yes, I agree. So I think we've kind of covered this episode up, but I will ask you this, son, before we go. Out of a, a rating of 10, of course, which is the normal Super Geeks uh, rating system, uh, what would you give this episode? I personally would give it... Oh, well, I'm going to give it a uh, 7. What would you give it? I was going to give it... I, I really want to give it an 8.5. Mostly because the the... The, yeah, there are some nitpicks with with you know uh, Jody doing the uh, the you're not an activist, you're a terrorist, and it, and it's like not explaining that well, just saying you're now the terrorist, you're the bad guy. As, you know what? I'm as, gonna like, revise but, my. But but the whole episode itself is like, look, this automation is great, but. There's literally an entire population that is suffering because only 10% of the entire population of any given workforce is actually working. This is a thing that needs to change. Here's one desperate guy who, yeah, is a bad guy, but he is so desperate at this point that he's willing to go this far because he doesn't think anybody's listening. And what happens at the end of the episode? Well, the head of people is saying, I'm going to make sure that we're doing more than 10% hiring. I'm actually going to match you at the at the I'm going to my what I just said to eight, because I thought about it as you were talking. And I'm like, you know, I love the episode. I, I actually feel bad because I actually said on my personal feed that this was the best Doctor Who episode this season. Of course, I was excited by the fact that it was new and somebody made a point. But I will put it up there with the top. I want to say top two. It is It is definitely on the high end of the spectrum, for sure. Uh, for me, the first greatest episode was the Ghost Monument, because the, the moment where she gets the TARDIS back, you can't... Ma I mean, that was amazing. And no, then, I see, yeah, yeah. I, at this point, I still think Demon's... Is better, even though I may not have rated it higher. I'm just going I by still, scenes. Uh, yeah. Scenes, well, like the whole yeah, episode, yeah. you're right. Oh, yeah. I Ghost Fineman, the, uh, all together, may not have been that great, but that one scene where she gets to turn us back was yeah, but the, Yeah, but that marriage scene, though, in Demon. Yeah, I agree. That's why it's hard. It's like you have to kind of sp sl sort of splice it up. You know what I mean? Like... Okay, I love this moment from this episode, and I love this moment from this episode. So how do we like look at it as a whole? You know what I mean? Well, see, but, here's here's the thing. You know, I know you don't have the same friends I do that, or, or the or the same some of them. the same viewing or the same viewing preferences that I do when it comes to hearing people complain or praise this. The, the, I'm not the sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but go ahead. It's, well, well, yeah. So like you said, you didn't, you didn't have all the people who were anti SJW complaining about Dr. Who. Uh, yeah. I, I, I have people that 
that I watch who are like that. If I well, I guess I wanted to, for not being I, in those circles. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing: if I wanted an episode of this season of Doctor Who to show them and go, look, they're literally talking about shit you do. This would be the episode to do it with. Ooh, so it's like hoodoo, hoodoo. I mean, it's Pretty like much. the how do you how do you introduce people to new who? Well, you don't show them the very first episode of the Eccleston era because they get confused by living plastic. A trash can eating people has like I've literally had people watch the first episode because I go here here's 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 the new Doctor Who and they you stop want... watching they stop watching because a trash can ate somebody that doesn't make sense. Bye. You know what episode I uh I introduced my daughter to uh, before she started making like tons of videos. Don't was, blink. Uh, blink. Yeah, that makes sense because I mean it. It's it it creates an it it is an episode that sets itself up not like a Doctor Who episode from the other but side. Falls but falls into being a Doctor episode a Doctor Who episode. Because of the events going on around it, which is why I would always recommend Blink as, the, as a if you're going to get into New Who, never watch Doctor Who. I'm going to if 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 anybody to this day says, "What do I start with?" I'm going to say, "Well, normally I would say any episode as long as it's the first episode of a new Doctor, because you know you're starting from fresh. You meet this new Doctor, and they know that they know that whether it's Jody or Matt Smith or." Peter Capaldi or anybody else, they're going to start you off and go, and you're going to learn, even if you don't even know. They're going to you're going to learn as you go. But that being said, blink. That's a great episode. It's a good way to look at it because you're looking at it from the other side. It's like somebody going, "Who is this guy?" And then you know you figure stuff out. Anyway, it, it seems like a yeah, it seems like a murder mystery through the ages that you're following, and then you go, oh, this is you know, this is basically this is Doctor Who, and then you come to the next episode, and it's the majority of the Doctor instead of being from a people's perspective. See, the people's perspective kind of sneaks you into the culture. And next week we're going to have some witchcraft. I mean, tonight, or I guess tonight's episode. I haven't seen it the, yet. The, the Sunday's episode. Oh yeah, shoot! I keep forgetting. It's still Thanksgiving, George. Yeah, I know. By the way, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. This is our Thanksgiving reaction episode. Uh, yeah, that was planned. Um, so, son, where can people find you on social media? Uh, you can find my uh, posting of the stuff that I'm in at uh, Facebook.com/sunsyallfan. And you can find me here, but not just that. I'm starting to realize that maybe you should hit subscribe because if you hit subscribe, every new episode of Super Geek, no matter whether it's a reaction who or something else, you'll get an update. It'll go ding on your phone. Well, so, that's yeah, that that, but only if you also hit the little bell notification. Yeah, too. you have to because because uh, because YouTube doesn't know what the hell it wants to do with its own automation. So sometimes mm -hmm. even clicking the bell doesn't seem to work. So and people yeah. seem to be using the phone more than the computer these days. But that's okay as long as people get notified. So click your little bell, click your little notification, do whatever you Subscribe, need to do. Like if you enjoyed the show. Exactly. Like if you enjoyed the show. Click the little bell. Do whatever you got to do. We're going to always. And hey, if you don't like the show, you can hit the dislike button, but tell us in the comments what you didn't like. Yeah. Piss, you know, talk about Sun, talk about me, talk about anybody. But uh, do it. Just at least engage. Engage in our show. So I'm, I expect there to be nasty comments about me because there have been nasty comments about me since, since I started podcasting with other people. It's like, ooh. ooh. Uh, no, I shouldn't. I shouldn't repeat ah, that here. Come on, I'm only I'm only going to stir the shit pot. But I mean, that shit amuses me. So <laughs> put on your big girl pants, son. We're ready to go. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, I've been called. I I've been told that I needed to quit tribbles because I'm nothing but a stupid fucking tranny, like several different times. And it's like I didn't realize I was some kind of engine block or something. Well, oh, that okay, cool. At least I'm running a vehicle. At least you're running a vehicle. I mean, I mean, I'm just saying, you're right. <laughs> so, anyways, so guys, thank you for joining us. We're going to talk about Doctor Who every time until 
There is no more Doctor Who. And until then... There will never not be Doctor Who. So. Yeah. Hopefully. I agree. I hope not. But until then, we will talk to you next time. Geek out.